So what sparked your interest uh, in comedy and like comedic writing and pretty much everything you've been doing in your career? And, and generally, was performing arts like something big in the area where you grew up and all that good stuff? Yeah, so I was really into honestly like doing like theater in school and like drama stuff in school from like the time I was in, you know, like elementary school. I was just super, super drawn to it. And so just anytime there was like a school play or like going to the like school district, like summer program, they off if they offered like a drama class, I wanted to do it and not be playing outside during the summer, which was also easier because I was in Arizona. So it was like blazingly hot, which is like, oh, wow. I would rather be in a school multi-purpose room doing a weird play that like the choir teacher at the school wrote instead of like playing outside it was very uh, appealing to me. And then when I got to high school, there was a really good theater program where it's like every other district or every other school in this district, they do like a fall, you know, play and a spring musical and that's it. And it's, then you just go about your business. But the school that I was at, they did just because basically when it was like the program was founded in the early nineties, like the school was like very relatively new when I was going, the people that the first drama teachers were like, we want to do a billion plays. We just want to do six plays a year. And so we got, mm -hmm. I, I just got to do and be around a ton of that stuff. And I just loved it. I just wanted to be there as much as possible. It was a really cool program. So I was super, super interested in it. And then I always really just liked reading my, when I was a kid, I remember in elementary school hearing that there was a talent show at school and like running out to my mom's car after school and being like, mom, there's a talent show at school. I'm going to do something. I got to do the talent show. And her just like, it was like, her just like, she was quiet for a second. And you could tell that she was like bracing herself a little bit. And she was just like, read in the talent show. Uh -huh. You can't get up on stage <laughs> with like thing. Lois Lowry's The Giver and just like, read it quickly. And so I think what ended up happening was because I was really into like performing arts and stuff, but also I was really into reading and writing and all that stuff. That mm -hmm. ended up being the fusion of like we were talking about, I think before we started recording, like becoming, getting into screenwriting playwriting like that kind of stuff where basically like writing and the performing arts or film and tv and whatever and those things intersect that was my i realized this is a combination of what i'm interested in and what i'm good at if that makes any mm. sense and so when i then got to college i i like had become aware like okay like comedy is a thing also that i'm really into i'm watching a ton of like Comedy Central and stand up and sketch comedy, like Mr. Show on HBO was super duper influential and something I saw like right before going to college and was like, oh, wait, sketch comedy. I've always loved stuff like that. So that's maybe a place to go. And then when I got to college, got into a, a sketch group and that's where I met Donald uh, Glover and, and, and Dominic Durkis, Dan Ekman, Maggie McFadden, the other people that went on to form Derek comedy, the sketch group that I was in, but there was a, there was a larger like sketch group that was starting up around that time that I was aware of when I was going to school and just going, I just really want to do this because again, like I like performing, I like being on stage, but I also know that I'm really good at, and I really like writing. And so like writing sketch, learning that as its own art form is just really, again, a combination of what I'm interested in and what I feel drawn to or, or what I'm, what I have, I've spent a bunch of time doing and I, I have seemed to have a knack for it. So that's like how I would say if it's like a pyramid, it's started with reading and performing arts. And then it just ended up like converging in like the comedy world. Oh, that's definitely interesting. Uh, and I also wanted to know what the early stages of that might have been for you, because it seems like it started off when you were in college, because uh, I know you you wrote the movies, uh, the uh, mystery team. I know yeah. you've done yeah. a lot of writing for shows, and which, which it was another obsession for me and Demetrius. Like, we'll talk, yes. we'll get into that later. But, oh, cool. <laughs> but yeah, so, I, you know, all of that good stuff. So I want to know, like, generally, like, as a, a comic, was it hard for you, like, doing stand-up or trying to get work or appear on shows or all of that stuff like how was the early stages of that for you yeah I have just been really insanely lucky and, and was really insanely lucky especially at the the early stages of my career in terms of just like how things rolled out and converged where I like I was saying ended up in school I went to NYU oh, and nice. that's where I ended up meeting like I said all the people that ended up forming Derek in this larger comedy group and so that it was basically like we all just liked sketch comedy because we liked it and it was a weird thing where it was different art forms have gone or different 
cultural things have gone through this period, like anime or Dungeons and Dragons or comics or different things where you're, we're the only people that like this weird thing that nobody else <laughs> likes. Then you find somebody else that likes it. We both like the weird little thing that we like. <laughs> and, but at that time it was, we're the people that like sketch comedy and we like kids in the hall and, and Mr. Show and Chappelle's show. And what was the other one I was gonna, thinking of Saturday Night Live, obviously. Yeah. And so we're the people that like, like those and we're versed in those. And we realized not just like that's comedy, but we realized like it's a specific thing called sketch. And so we're really into learning about that. And also, yes, we're just super into that. And that is where just again, the intersection, the like lucky intersection of YouTube becoming it started out where it's literally, we're talking about like mid two thousands and we had started, Derek uh, had started making videos literally just to have them because we were like we're writing these sketches and let's make videos and maybe we'll put them up on our own website and people can see them and maybe they'll want to come to one of our live shows or whatever and then that's when youtube started and so we just lucked out that it was like we're already making short to two to five minute comedy things and then now there's suddenly this free way that we can put them up online and that was the original attraction was just like not having to pay for a server right. where we're going to pay to host our videos every month as ar archaic and crazy as that sounds and so that's like the, those videos ended up online. They ended up getting some attention and getting popular and connecting with people, which again, no guarantee of that happening. We just got lucky, but we're, we're very grateful for that. And then through that and through getting some, some like attention in the entertainment industry, and then also making some money from like selling merchandise and the beginnings of sort of monetization of internet videos and things like that. And then a combination of that and the friends and family believing in us and investing in us were able to put together the money to like independently produce a feature film, which was awesome because it was like, or, but also a big risk because part of it was like, we're making now some money, which we never thought would even be a thing from people paying us to make videos for online and whatever. And instead of paying ourselves, we're choosing to reinvest it in making something bigger. And it's also at a time in our lives where a little bit of money could make a big difference in our actual, just like day-to-day -day existence, but we're still going, you know what, let us hold off. And also there's, you know, just, just tons of, again, luck and timing and, and privilege that, that came along with that and went along into that. But then we wrote this movie, made the movie, and then just also because of who we were around, like in New York and when the Upright Citizens Brigade, which we had been super involved in, in New York at that time, just a lot of really amazing people who went on to really big careers were like in the movie and that was really cool. And then from that sort of getting some attention, going to Sundance, whatever, sorry, this is a long answer. Like, like I said, that pretty much like me and Demetrius, that's, that's our history we, we, right there. Yeah, we bonded <laughs> over those albums, right. man. Those mixed yes. man, and, uh, and Derek Comedy. Oh my God, that was like one of those. <laughs> Yes. The one with the sulfur, and he was talking about that's the sulfur, the lemonade one. Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, that's like a deep cut. That's how I know that you're really, that's like oh, a yeah. really, yeah, I appreciate that. You're, you're you. an OG if you know that one. Like, yeah, most definitely. And that's actually the next thing I was about to ask because my my personal favorite is memory loss. Yeah. So through all the sketches that like you've written, what's your first of all, like where did the where does the name because I always wanted to know that, where did the name Derek actually come from? And then what's your personal it, it, favorite? When we first started doing stuff like basically Derek ended up being just a it was like a D name and myself, Donald and Dominic were doing improv as like a three person team for like in this like tournament at UCB. And so we needed another, we were just like, let's just do another D name. Okay, Derek, great. And then we had, ended up adding two more people when we started doing, actually making film sketches, which became what the group became, Dan and, and Maggie. So Maggie did not have a D name, unfortunately. So that kind of really threw things off. It was horrible, but yes, yeah, so that's, that was the origin of the name. And then as far as like what my favorite one would be, I think like by the end of what Derek was, we were just getting like more kind of weird and not everything needing to be as like a linear sketch that we learned how to do. Okay, there's three beats and it's heightens and whatever. So there was one we did that started out as like a, a scene in an improv show called New Bike that I really liked where basically it's uh, um, yes, for I people that, that haven't seen it where it's just okay, a dad saying to a kid like, hey, me and your mom were talking and we did decide we were going to get you that new bike that you wanted. 
And then Donald playing the son saying, oh, dad, that's so great. Now I don't have to kill you. Not, the dad not really understanding whatever. And the, and the son trying to like call off like in a suspense movie where it's called off, call off the whatever. And then there's an assassin there played by Dominic because like it's too late. It's already in motion and the dad yeah. gets killed and you know, whatever. And so just more kind of rather than these three beat more linear things, something that would start one way and then take like a turn almost like what you were talking about earlier, Chad, in a different way with a horror story where it's like, you think it, you're in one genre and then you're actually in a completely different, you know, genre or whatever. And then Dan as a director, I think getting to go crazy and doing lots of different like genre E things, like suddenly you're in the born identity, even, you know, when you thought you were in Leave it to Beaver, I think is like really cool. And that's still something I'm, I'm very passionate about blending genres like that yeah so stuff like that i think stood out to me as that's where it had evolved in a way and i that i am still very proud of and just yeah just like weird silly stuff like that and like you said like the sulfur lemonade one where there's a guy doing a, a lemonade ad where he's i put sulfur in and, and he even doesn't know why. The character is making dumb decisions for reasons that are even unclear to them is very funny to me. It's just like sillier stuff like that, I think is like the, the, the stuff that I'm still like, oh yeah, right on. <laughs> yeah, it, the crazy thing is that comedy still holds up. Like I watched them like yes. oh, recently and I watched the one recently about the when he's trying to sell the house and he's, he can fit a lot of bodies in here. And then he tells he's oh uh, the, the bear shit on the, in the forest on my hands and like yeah, that whole yes. that whole thing has me laughing still because it, it still yes. holds up. It's completely, <laughs> it's, it's, it's completely relevant. It is definitely. I know. One of my favorites is yeah. Fuck man. Like, Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that one does like stand out to me as a sort of, I think, because also we were in like, like I said, we were like early to YouTube thing and that whatever. And like, like when you would encounter like people that are in like the tech world and they're spouting a lot of stuff where you're like, you're either a genius or you're completely full of, of shit, I think was like where that sort of came from. That does feel somewhat, I think, still relevant to this day. And I do enjoy that just like, just the, sil just the, again, like the silliness of it, I think it is uh, still very funny to me. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's definitely awesome. And like I said, with the with the, the midlife crisis album, like we'd love to get midlife crisis form of Derek. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. any, like exactly. I'm open to any of that. Anything we'll say, you want to drop, <laughs> anything, just let us know. We read it. Read it <laughs> so, so we're here for it. All yes. Of it. Oh, thanks, man. Thank you. Time only goes one direction. So we'll end, we'll end up, whether or not it takes an art form, we'll definitely end up in some sort of midlife crisis at some point, all of us. So yes. yeah, yeah, we'll see. Like I said, all of this stuff, is, it sounds good. And like I said, dude, like I said in our uh, email, you've certainly had a huge uh, impact on us. And we're just really excited to see whatever you come up with next. We're here for, your, we're thanks, here for the ride. I really appreciate that. Thank you for, thank you guys for having me. And yeah, super fun. 